hey, look, I'm fasting. Now I'm not fasting. Wait, it's been three seconds. I'm officially fasting again. See, that's what most people think. We all know how important minerals are, but did you know that when you're fasting, they become even more important? And minerals aren't just the only mistake that people make when they're fasting. No, there's four other ones. I wanna break down exactly how important they are and give you the tips and tricks that you can use to get the most out of intermittent fasting and get the most out of your minerals. The first common intermittent fasting mistake is simply not getting enough of your healthy foods in. That sounds so vague, so simple, right? Man, if you're not used to my videos, you're probably tuning out now because you're saying this guy's way too basic, but that's fine. You see, what it comes down to is the fact that your stomach has something called dispensability. What that is, is it operates like a muscle. It shrinks and it expands. And if you eat more and you eat more frequently, then your stomach expands and it gets used to eating more. But the thing is, when we're fasting, we're going obviously extended periods of time without eating, which means the stomach shrinks. Well, that's all fine and dandy and kind of a good thing in terms of calorie restriction, but when it comes down to the end of the day and it's time to break your fast, well, then you usually go for the foods that taste good first. So you're gonna go for something that's a little bit more dense or maybe has a little bit more volume to it. The problem is it's gonna fill you up super fast because your stomach shrank. Then you have no desire to have the veggies because you flat out don't have room and you're not hungry. This is a big, big issue. And although it sounds so simple, it's one of the biggest ones that plagues people that intermittent fast. Now, I could tell you a bunch of ways to not have junk food when you first break your fast, but in reality, I'm preaching to the choir because everyone sets out with that common mission, but not everyone can live through with it. So what I recommend is at some point during your feeding window is to get more high fat, dense foods into your diet simply because that's going to allow you to meet your caloric needs and it's going to allow you to more than likely get enough of the nutrients that you need. You see, calorically dense foods like fats are significantly smaller in volume but allow you to reach your caloric goals. So therefore, you're not going into a calorie deficit and you're also not filling up your stomach. So you're able to get enough calories and you have enough room to ultimately get your veggies in. All right, let's move on to the number two common mistake. And this is flat out coffee and tea creamers. It seems pretty logical that if you were going to be adding something that has calories, like a creamer, like a half and half or an almond milk to your coffee, that kind of makes it a food. But most people don't really want to look at it like that. And I think they just turn that off in their brain. They think coffee is coffee. If I add some creamer to it, I'm not breaking a fast. It's a liquid. No, that's not the case. You're still taking in something that is eliciting a metabolic response. If you put creamer, and I mean even a half a tablespoon of low calorie almond milk that accounts to about 12 calories, you are breaking your fast. Fasting is not eating, not fasting is eating, okay? We need to make sure that we are not consuming any calories during our fasting window, period. Anytime that you consume food or anything that triggers a caloric response or metabolic response, you are stopping the process of burning stored energy and converting over to the process of using food energy. We don't want that. Which leads me in to number three. Okay, this number three fasting mistake is consuming branched chain amino acids. And I'm gonna kick this one off with a research bomb so that it makes sense and I have some credibility. There was a 2011 study that took a large group of young men and they looked at a few things. They were looking at amino acid levels, they were looking at energy substrate levels, and they were looking at insulin levels during a fast. So what they did is on day one, they brought them all in and they said, okay, we're gonna take your baseline blood work and we're gonna have you fast. And then we're gonna read out your fast blood work for the next seven hours. They're gonna read it every hour and they're gonna determine where they stand. Okay, everything was all fine and dandy. Then five days later, they had these same men come back and do the exact same thing, take a baseline test followed by seven subsequent tests, except this time, they gave them five grams of branched chain amino acids at the beginning of their fast. Well, guess what? The studies ended up showing that when they had the branched chain amino acids, they had transient levels of insulin. They had these spikes. Throughout the day, they had these little spikes in insulin. What that means is although it's a small insulin spike, branched chain amino acids do break a fast. Now, a lot of people are gonna argue with me. They're gonna say, hey, it's such a small insulin spike, it's barely gonna make a difference. That's not gonna kick you out of ketosis or anything like that. Well, newsflash, this isn't a ketogenic lifestyle diet. We're talking about fasting. It's black and white. And if you have insulin spiking, 
you're starting your fast over. You may as well count as soon as you have that branched chain amino acid as you restarting your fast. Because as far as your body's metabolism is concerned, and as far as the detoxing process goes, you've restarted. All right, so now I've gotten off my high horse, let me go ahead and roll in to number four. Okay, the number four biggest mistake that people make when intermittent fasting is simply not drinking enough water. Again, it sounds like a pretty simple one, right? You always should be hydrated. But when it comes to fasting, there's some unique things that are going on. You see, fasting promotes this thing called cell apoptosis. What cell apoptosis is the promoted cellular death and recycling. And it sounds like a bad thing, like we wouldn't want to have that cell death, but we do. You see, when we're fasting, we're not having to work on metabolizing food. So our body works on metabolizing itself, which means it recycles the cells, it burns up and kills off the cells that don't need to be there, promotes them to die, and then it recycles them and you excrete them. The thing is, if you're not adequately hydrated, you can't flush out those toxins. So you literally are doing yourself more harm than good. Your body's killing off the bad cells, the ones it doesn't need, it's recycling them, but it has no way to recycle them. So you're just having them sit there. It can't flush them out. Now additionally, when you're fasting, you're burning a lot of fat. You're utilizing fat as a source of fuel. And we have to remember that fat is where many of our toxins build up. So if we're burning fat, we're releasing those toxins. And if we're not drinking water, we can't process those toxins through the liver and excrete them. They're just gonna float around in the body, making us toxic. So yeah, you're hearing me right. Fasting can actually set you back if you're not hydrated properly. So let this be a rule that you drink more water when you're fasting than you would when you are not. Which leads me in to the final mistake. And this is a big one. Minerals, salt, magnesium, potassium, these are so critical when you're fasting. You see, minerals don't really affect your metabolism in terms of caloric in, caloric out. We have to make sure that we're still getting our minerals in, especially if you're consuming extra water during a fasting period. Minerals are so critical for cellular function and for the electrical signals that our brain is sending throughout our body. If we don't have them, we can't function well. But there's an added benefit to making sure you get enough sodium. And I highly recommend you add just like a quarter teaspoon or maybe a half a teaspoon to your gallon jug of water that you're gonna sip on throughout the day. What this is gonna do is it's going to allow the cell to become more permeable. That isotonic state, okay, the state where the cell has enough sodium to draw in additional water causes the membrane to expand a little bit and become permeable. A permeable cell membrane means that nutrients and toxins can flow in and out. You've opened a revolving door so that the cell can breathe, can eat, waste, and detoxify. It's the way that it needs to be. So if you have those minerals while you're fasting, it allows that process to occur and allows you to maintain hydration. So there you have it, Jigsaw. Make sure that you take advantage of the MAG SRT extended sustained release technology that's gonna allow you to get all the magnesium that you need throughout your fasting window and beyond. So I'll see you in the next video, Jigsaw.